Today on Rejoice, 28-year-old Christian doctor, youth speaker, former youth minister, and author Josh Mandrell is here to talk about his latest book, Dating, Finding, and Keeping the One, Stuff Other Relationship Guides Won't Tell You. And we got a wonderful guest. Our special guest today is Dr. Josh Mandrell, who's a 28-year-old Christian doctor. Since the age of 16, he's had privilege of speaking at literally hundreds of youth rallies, youth camps, and church revivals around the country. He's saved, sanctified, and single. And he's the author of a great book titled Dating, Finding, and Keeping the One. Welcome to Rejoice. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I have to start out saying this. Kathy and I read through the book. We laughed and laughed. I mean, <laughs> it is just hilarious. And a young man at your age, 28 years old, God has brought you a long way. And Tell us a little bit of what prompted you to write this book. Well, I actually, uh, Eddie, I didn't seek to write a book. It, but I, I tell people sometimes the, the book found the author. It found me because I had... And a lot of it came from my own struggles. Some people say, out of your messes comes your message. Uh -huh. And it came out of, out of my own struggles with relationships and, God, what do you have in store? And out of that, I think <laughs> I've probably read every Christian, every dating book out there. Um, all of the Josh Harris, I Kiss Dating Goodbye, all of the um, Every Young Man's Battle and about purity and relationships. And as I read those and, and then also tried to educate myself, I thought maybe if I, I watched every Bachelor and Bachelorette program on television, <laughs> I could figure this out. And as I read those more and more, I kept thinking, you know, there's so much that's not being said. And I was thinking about that, praying about that, and I really felt this deep calling on my heart that, how about you write it? Maybe you should write it. And so I, I wrote the book, and uh, God, is, God has just blessed it since because it's come that, out. So. Well, and at, at such a young age, you've done uh, youth rallies. You've done, talk a little bit about how, just, just touch on yeah. that just a bit, on how you got into that. Yeah, the, I, I uh, didn't plan on, uh, on being in that active role in ministry oh. growing up. I, I grew up in a Christian household, and at the age of around 18, I graduated high school, was starting college, and a local church needed a youth leader and needed a youth minister. And I just felt, again, this deep burden that maybe I was, I was uh, called to kind of take that role. So I, I went in as an 18-year-old, and the church eventually said, you know, we were going to offer you an interview, but we weren't planning on hiring you. And I wasn't planning really to be hired, but it really, God took over, and I accepted right. that role. And out of that, working as a youth leader, I made a lot of contacts in okay. lots of different um, churches and denominations because my heart really is to, to share what, what God's laid on my heart, my, my passion for, for youth and helping them make a, a strong relationship with other people and, and with God. So it was kind of, it, so throughout college, I, I worked in that 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 church and then I went to medical school mm -hmm. and I thought well I'm gonna take a little break from this active ministry and again the, the ministry kinda of found me and I started volunteering as a youth leader at a different church up near St. Louis where where I was in uh, medical school and then since going on to residency I'm in dermatology residency okay. as a skin doctor um, since doing that I've kind of been active at, actively involved in different ministries and even to to publish this book I, I started my own ministry okay. um, and so it's it's kind of been throughout my life in different areas and when one door closes another one uh, another one seems to open Look so well, what really interested me in reading through the book is the many experiences that you've had. And I could tell that you, you're very well read just by reading this. I could tell that you are. <clears throat> One of the things you talk about in the book is um, walking away. Uh, knowing when to let a, a bad yeah. relationship go or one that you're in and out of. Yeah. Talk a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. We don't talk about that enough or a lot. Um, nobody, nobody likes walking away from a relationship. If you, you've got a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend or you've started dating, and I hadn't read any relationship book out there that the first chapter is the gift of breaking up. But as I, I, I prayed, I really believe if you're, you know, starting a, a dating relationship or, or courtship, mm -hmm. and you, f you find out there at the beginning that this isn't the person God has in store for you. There's too many things that collide in, in that, those interpersonal uh, interactions. It's not worth it. You know, a lot of people hold on to relationships out of fear. There's, I think all of us have a degree of insecurity where we're afraid, if, if I let this go, I'll never find somebody else. I'll be alone. I won't find anybody else. And, and we, we live out of fear instead of saying, you know, God, 
if, if this isn't the person for me, there's somebody out there for me. And I think yes. it's a gift not just for you, but if you're, you're holding on to a relationship and trying to make it, make it work, um, and, and again, I'm referring to kind of these dating relationships, trying to make them work and they're not meant to, it, it leads to lots of, uh, lots of heartbreak mm -hmm. when the re relationship eventually ends up breaking. And yes. so I say, you know, it's a, it's a gift of breaking up. Free the other person to be who God's called them to be, to mm -hmm. find the person in their life that God's called them to be that, that helpmate. Mm -hmm. um, and free yourself to find that person too. So I think it's a gift for both people. I That's think good. one of the reasons why some the young people that I talk to and even have dealt with is codependency. They have a That's problem right, right. walking away and because of that codependency, right. the person that they want to hold on to wants to walk away. Right. Talk about that. Yeah, I was, I was actually reading, um, I think it's uh, in First, First Corinthians 10 about idols and we always think of idols being a, a golden calf or something like that but a lot of times people can be our idol anything that comes before that primary relationship with God is an idol to us and that's kind of what codependency is it, it's saying here's a person in my life and I can't live without them mm -hmm. I literally can't go on without them and you it, there's there's kind of an obsessive quality and it's it's so hard to 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 get out of that relationship and a lot of times two people who are codependent on each other are make for a, a terrible relationship mm -hmm. because they're trying to find in each other <clears throat> what can only be found in God. Mm -hmm. yes. That that completeness, that filling of their heart and their mind, uh, they're, they're trying to seek that in another person. And and it's it's a struggle and you see um, all these people, when you're walking down the street and you hear people yelling through the phone, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you didn't be, you weren't there for me, you weren't all that I wanted you to be. Yes. And a lot of times they're trying to put qualities on other people mm -hmm. that we're supposed to find in our God. Mm -hmm. And so, That's good. Um, I, one of one of the things that a scripture that keeps on coming to my mind is there in Matthew I think it's 633 seek first the kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness and then all of these things will be given and I put in all of the, these things I put relationships with other people I put all of those things and I think it sounds kind of simple or cliche but I truly believe that if we put God in the center mm -hmm. um, all of those other things uh, all of those things uh, other things will work out in That's the good. end, like puzzle pieces coming yes. together. So I guess codependency, to answer your question, is just trying to put somebody else in the center and you're relying on them for something that as a human being we fail, they're not able to fulfill in our lives. Yes. Oh, Josh, you, That's can, good. you can shout that from the house. <laughs> That's it's, absolutely it's true. Wonderful. You know, and in your book you talk about various levels of intimacy, various levels. Of, would you just touch a little bit on that? Yeah, I think it's kind of a, a broad a, a broad situation because intimacy there's different levels of intimacy as there is different levels of of our different types of love mm -hmm. you know there's an intimacy between friends that that um, camaraderie there's an intimacy between family members and parents and and things like that and then mainly you know this book when we talk about dating is that that intimacy between um, a husband and a wife between a fiance that that um, that special type of intimacy and that's there's different types even within that there's an emotional intimacy yes. that I don't think we talk a lot about and then there's a physical intimacy and intimacy is not bad I mean God God made um, physical intimacy mm -hmm. he made emotional intimacy and it's uh, from you know from a lot of people that I've talked to uh, it's it's an amazing thing, but I guess the struggle, which we all struggle with, especially single guys who are, are 28, one of the struggles is that it's easy to try to seek out that intimacy when we're not ready. And mm. when you when you try to have intimacy, that that special type of intimacy, husband and wife type of intimacy, before you're ready, you know, awakening those desires, it's t without commitment, intimacy is destructive. Mm. It yes. really is. So. You know, I, I think a lot of times we grow up, you know, a lot of, we hear things in church and we, we get scared of, of intimacy or, or those things. And I, I tell people it's not, it's, it's, God has a timing for everything. It's not that that in itself is bad. It's the mo one of the most amazing things. It's just waiting and being patient for God's perfect timing in our lives. 